So, a few years back, me and a few friends had walked across our town to go to the town centra. We were around 13 at the time. Our town was not huge, but it was one of the bigger towns in the county. There was a lot of crime in the area, usually to do with drugs. Anyway, back to the story. We were walking along one of the main roads because it was the shortest way to get to the town centra. We were all staying at our friend John's house later that night, and we wanted to get some snacks and maybe some new games, if they were cheap. Well, we made it to the town centra, all was well and good, but on the way back is when it got a bit creepy. About halfway between John's house and the town centra, while walking down the main road, we noticed a man in a dark jacket walking behind us. It was around 5 p.m. and it was February, so it was getting a bit darker. We thought nothing of it intentionally, but as we walked further and further, we noticed he was still following us. We decided to pick up our pace to try and get back as fast as we possibly could, while trying to remain calm. Despite taking a different route home to try and lose this man, he stuck with us, walking about 10 meters behind us. We were at the bottom of John Street when the man started to slow down. We got back and while we were shaken up about the man following us, we didn't think it was a big deal so we didn't bother telling John's mom or brother. Later on, around 9pm, John's mom went out to spend time with some of her friends and his brother was at a neighbor's house. We were sitting in the living room. John's house was laid out in a way that the sofa in the living room was visible from the kitchen, and the kitchen had a window at the front side of the house. We were watching a film, and I went to get a drink. I walked to the fridge next to the window and got some coke. When I closed the door, I glanced at the window to look out. I thought I noticed someone there, but it was pretty dark outside and the light was on in the kitchen, so it was hard to see outside properly. I shrugged it off and walked back to the living room. About 20 minutes passed, and I glanced back over to the window. Now the kitchen light was off, as was the living room light, making it easier to see outside. I could quite clearly see a man there, and he looked exactly like the man who was following us on the way home, wearing the same dark jacket, staring at me and my friends intently. I looked back at the TV, not trying to give anything away. I told my friends that I think that there was someone at the window, but not to all look. John turned and looked. He was as shocked as I was. We were all 13 years old and home alone. Needless to say, we pretty much shit ourselves. John got up and went over to the home phone, which was just next to the front door, and called his brother. He said he would come over straight away. We made sure the front door and back door was locked and sat in the living room until his brother came back. Thankfully, the man was gone by the time John's brother got back. We checked the house and the garden just in case he was hiding somewhere, but he was gone. We all thought this would be the end and that we wouldn't see the man again. But a few weeks later, me and my friends were walking to a sports event, taking the same route we had taken previously, and we saw the man again. This time, he didn't follow us, but as we walked past, he stared at us intently. None of us knew who this man was or why he followed us. None of us have seen the man since, and hopefully we never will. So my psycho ex stalker story happened on the west coast of the United States about 11 years ago. I was a 23 year old female living in my very first apartment. I was single, working part-time, and going to college, so I was more focused on getting my life together than dating. Valentine's Day was approaching, and of course I didn't have a special someone in my life at the time. So a co-worker of mine thought it would be a good idea to hook me up with a single guy she knew named Jack. Jack and I talked on the phone for a few days before meeting in person. When we eventually met, Jack brought flowers, candy, and told me immediately how attracted he was to me, even saying that I am his girl now. 
It struck me as kind of an odd thing to say, as it was our first time meeting, but I thought he was really handsome. He was six foot one, he had a gorgeous smile, and seemed really sweet, so I just brushed the oddness off. We hung out for a few weeks. During that time, Jack started acting very strange and clingy. He was very quiet and liked to ask questions about me and told me a lot about his personal life. But besides a simple hi, he basically ignored and never spoke to any of my family or friends who came to visit often. He always wanted to occupy my time, wanted to know what I was doing all the time. He would get angry if I was busy or had other plans. He wasn't physically abusive, but really possessive. He even told me he loved me in a month or so of knowing me, but I laughed it off thinking he was joking around. One night, he actually got on his knees to propose to me. I told him we have only been seeing each other for a few months and we should wait until we're both ready. Besides, he didn't even have a ring. He said he was ready to get married as soon as possible. We can go to the courthouse now and he will buy me a ring later. Um, no thank you. If it's meant to be, we'll get married when the time comes. The very next week, he gets back on his knees to propose again, saying he was ready now. At this point, I started to freak out. Not only was he clingy, but he was moving way too fast for me. I mean, we've only known each other for a few months. I was still busy with work and school, so I told him maybe we should take a break from hanging out for a while. He got this really weird look on his face and got really quiet but eventually started smiling and agreed with me that we should take a break. A few days of not hearing from him, I came home to find him sitting on my staircase. I asked him what he was doing there, and he just said, Waiting for you. And smiled. After an awkward moment of silence, I told him he needed to go home. He got up and left, but then he started to randomly stop by my place, if I was there, I pretended not to be. He would knock for about 30 minutes, leave for a few minutes, and come back. He started waiting on my staircase for me to get home so much I had to hide at my neighbor's apartment and wait until he eventually left. He called my cell non-stop and I just ignored him. After a couple of months of this, he just stopped all of a sudden. I was completely relieved, like he finally got the point. About three months of not hearing from him, I get a call from an unfamiliar number. I answered it, and it was Jack. He wanted to know how I was doing, and wanted to see me. He also told his mother about me, and she wanted to meet me too. I got super creeped out and told him no, lose my number, and stop calling me. I guess he heard the opposite because he started randomly knocking on my door again he knocked on my door a couple of times and each time I had a friend or family member tell him to leave and not to come back, and each time he smiled and said, Okay. The third time he came over was the last straw for me. I had my best friend tell him I wasn't there. He asked her if he could wait for me inside my apartment until I got back. She told him no, and then he tried to push his way in. My friend called my name and I ran out to help her shut the door. Heart racing, I told him I was going to call the police if he didn't leave and never to come back again. He mumbled something through the door and then I could hear him walking down the stairs. I ended up not calling the police that night, but I regret that decision to this day. Jump forward about five to six months later, it was a bright, sunny Saturday afternoon. Two of my younger sisters were visiting. I was still laying in bed because I had a major migraine. Since I had lived alone, I had gotten used to leaving my bedroom door open so I could hear everything. I could hear them watching and talking about Vanilla Sky. I could also hear kids laughing and playing outside. I took more aspirin, then dozed off again, but was awakened shortly by a loud BAM. At first I thought maybe a kid bounced a ball or something off my door. Then I heard it again, and my sister started yelling, What the hell is that? Just as I was about to get up to go see what was going on, I heard screaming, 
and then a man's voice yelling, Get the fuck up. I started to panic, so this part might sound kinda fucked up, but since I had no clue what was going on or who the person was, I slowly closed my door, blocked it with my dresser, sat on the floor in front of the dresser, and called 911. In my state of mind, I thought it would be better to get the police over here ASAP, instead of risking my life even further by running into an unknown situation. Maybe this intruder didn't know there was a third person there. Anyways, I told the operator someone has broken into my apartment and sounded like he was threatening my sisters and that the police needed to come quick. The operator asked me a lot of questions about how many or what the intruder looked like, but of course I couldn't say because I was still laying in bed when it started. While I'm speaking with the 911 operator, I could hear a guy's voice asking, Where is your sister? She doesn't know what I had to do for her. I love her. I heard more screams, and then I heard, She's in the room! At that point my heart started beating triple time. I don't know why they told this person where I was, maybe just out of pure terror, or maybe getting me back for not coming out of my room to check on the situation, but next thing you know, my bedroom door was being kicked. Hard, so hard I actually thought I had started sliding across the floor. The intruder stops kicking my door and says, If you don't open the door right now, I'm killing everybody. I was so damn scared, literally crying, begging, and asking the 911 operator where the police were. The whole ordeal was only about five minutes, but in a situation like this, time slows way down, and it seemed like it went on for hours. I guess the intruder must have heard me talking to 911 because all of a sudden he stopped and took off running out of the apartment. I was still on the phone, crying with the door shut, and one of my sisters knocked and said it was okay to come out now. He's gone. I opened my door and said, who the fuck is he? They said, Jack. I couldn't believe it. In broad daylight, Jack kicked in my door with a sawed-off shotgun and threatened to kill my sisters and myself. The police ended up catching him about a week or so later. During this time, I found out through the police report that there was a previous incident that occurred with Jack a couple of weeks before my incident. The police were called because someone was shooting a shotgun in the air. When the police arrived, they found Jack holding the gun. They asked him why and Jack said because someone broke into his apartment, stole his weed, and cut the tip of his tongue. Not kidding. The police just issued him a ticket. Anyways, I actually helped catch him by giving them one of his family members' address that I found in the phone book and they caught him headed to their house. He confessed right there, but after he was arrested, he pleaded not guilty, but ended up taking a plea deal, only ended up serving five years. I moved to a different state after that. An even scarier part is I found out that when he got released, he moved into a halfway house literally right down the street from my old apartment where he kicked my door in. Eleven years have passed, and I still don't feel completely safe. I feel at any moment I could run into him randomly or hear my door being kicked in again. I keep moving constantly. I change my number every year. I carry pepper spray and tasers with me everywhere I go, and I never go to bed without checking if the doors and windows are locked tight. I still even put a chair under the doorknob before I go to sleep at night. So, to Jack who tried to kill me and my family, you're a piece of shit. I wish your psychotic ass would have rotted away in prison. I hope to never, ever, ever meet you again for the rest of my life. Hey guys, thank you all for watching my video, and a very big thank you to the subscribers who subscribe to me because now we are well over 2,000 subscribers. The Nightmare Army just keeps on growing and I love it. You guys are awesome and thank you so much for subscribing. And uh, a couple of ideas that I want to um, talk to you guys about. A recent subscriber of mine, Terry King, once asked me if I was going to do uh, t-shirts or fan mail. Well, the ideas do seem really good. However, I want to know what you guys think about it. The t-shirt thing and the uh, you know merchandise, uh, that I do have planned. That is 
coming in the future pretty damn soon, and I will announce it in a video. Um, as for fan mail, I want to know what you guys think about that. Do you guys want me to do fan mail? If so, in the next video, I will also mention that, and I can give you guys an address to send to for fan art or, you know, handwritten stories, <laughs> if you guys want me to do that. Anything and everything you guys want to send me, go right ahead. Uh, as always, guys, thank you all for watching, and just remember, the best ideas always come out of nightmares.